Paul Wainwright took his first photo of a historic meeting house in 2004. It was a chance encounter. He had never been particularly interested in the buildings before, but he quickly fell in love with the simple architecture and the meaning it holds. What started as a single photo shoot has since turned into a quest leading Wainwright to scores of meeting houses across New England and producing a body of work that blurs the line between history and art. Uh, when you look at the black and white photographs, they're not intended to document necessarily what these places look like in most cases. It's almost unimportant which meeting house is which when you look at my photographs. Photographs are intended to be kind of a composite portrait of the meeting house as, as an architectural type, as a, as a symbol in society. So the photographs are not meant to document what they look like, but they're meant to tell how I feel about them. When Wainwright began searching for more meeting houses to photograph, he quickly discovered that these historic buildings often fly under the radar. There is no organization of caretakers or even a comprehensive list of locations. In order to photograph meeting houses, he had to find them first, which proved to be no small feat. Uh, in order to photograph the interiors of these places, I've had to make contact with all of the organizations that own them and care for them, and um, some of the characters who have the, uh, the keys to these places are, are they're, they're living history. Uh, many of them are in their 80s uh, that have been uh, in love with their meeting house all their life and in, involved in preserving it. And, uh, and uh, they know everything about their own meeting house. And they're, they're so willing to tell how it was built, who the ministers were, um, some of the funny events that, that happened uh, in, in their meeting house. Um, uh, and it's been fun getting to know all of them. It wasn't long before these stories got under Wainwright's skin, and he began seeing meeting houses as more than just visually striking architecture to photograph, but as living buildings with stories to tell. Just every meeting house has, has such a rich history. I think a lot about those people. You know, I think a lot about my past and the people who came before me. I, I can trace my ancestry back through my great-grandfather. Uh, he lived about a hundred years before me, and I have his diaries, and as I read them, there's so much that's changed, of course. You know, all the technology's different, but all the human stuff is the same. <laughs> that has not changed at all, and so when I think about colonial meeting houses, which are another uh, century before him, the same is probably true. The technology has changed, but a lot of the uh, the human stuff of life is the same. And so I, I wonder a lot about the lives of the people that, that built and used these places and, and uh, what life must have been like for them. And, and since the meeting house is the center of the community and the center of society, uh, that's kind of the, the focal point for uh, you know, life as they knew it. Wainwright now maintains a website that details the history of these buildings and provides directions to those seeking them out. It's the most comprehensive site of its kind. He has also completed a book of his photographs that will be released in 2010. He hopes his work will inspire people to become curious about these historic buildings and help to bring meeting houses back into the New England consciousness. My goal started out just to be artistic, but I realized through my art I can raise the awareness of these places. And even here in New England, many people don't know about the meeting houses, even if their town might have one, they may kind of know where it is, but not know its history and uh, not know its importance in the community and, and the importance in trying to preserve it. One reason for good art's existence is to educate or teach or motivate people, and I, I think I can do that through my photography.